Shapiro wrecks the Washington Post cry bully who docks libs of TikTok. Is that as the left is exposed for what it is, as the radicalism is exposed, and as they become more unpopular because of that radicalism, finally you have the left's last gasp. And the last gasp of the left is we will attack anybody who exposes this stuff. Which brings us to the ex- What is the exposes what stuff that like gay teachers exist? The idea, any conversation that revolves around the libs of TikTok account that doesn't feature what they do and what the express purpose of the libs of TikTok account is and who's funding the libs of TikTok account, which is, you know, Babylon B and also other conservative operatives and literally the Florida state politicians, the Florida GOP, is doing a disservice. They're just lying. They're lying through omission. The libs of TikTok account doesn't just repost videos of trans people okay they don't just do that they call them all pedophiles okay that's their whole point look at this gay teacher they're a pedophile look at this trans teacher they're a pedophile that in and of itself is not being mentioned in the conservative conversation deliberately by the way just remember that whenever someone tries to tell you that shit it's taylor lorenz is a garbage heap she's a horrible reporter at the new york times she's 87 years old pretending to be a millennial and she spends all day on twitter and tiktok trying to track down the thoughts of 15 year olds She's pathetic. She's a horrible reporter. And not only is she a horrible reporter, she's a whiny, whiny reporter. So she went on MSNBC to complain about the fact that she spent her entire career trying to basically dox, uncover, and destroy people online she doesn't like personally. I love that he was like upset. He's like talking about how, uh, you know, this person exclusively, well, exclusively tracks down 15 year olds on the internet or some shit. It's like, Ben, what the fuck are you talking about? He's just, he's just like lying at this point. This is it. It's just all lies. Uh, and you can do that. If you are a Republican, you get to lie all the fucking time and no one will check you. No one will think that that's weird. You know what I mean? Like, no one will be like, wait a minute. Is that true? Is that what the fuck they're doing? It doesn't matter because again, this is an enemy right? Taylor Lorenz is an enemy to the right. So no matter what I do, no matter what I say, no matter what the fuck is going on, there is no way that I can ever be in the wrong, morally speaking, to my enemies who are evil. That's the way that a lot of people operate on the internet. The whole meme about, you know, how I, how I sleep knowing my enemies are ontologically evil and there is no wrongdoing whenever I do whatever the fuck I can to them. Just want to dispel any confusion and reiterate that zero people in my story are teenagers or kids. Shia Rachik is a full-on adult woman. Everyone mentioned in my story as an adult, read the full piece here. Did you know Taylor Lorenz is 40? What is her problem? Stop creeping on kids. Taylor Lorenz and the Washington Post think doxing a teenager, they run an anonymous Twitter account as journalism. That's low even for them. Yeah, this is not a real thing, but it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. They will never get punished. They will never get fucking punished for, for lying about this sort of shit, okay? That same argument is used against leftist law. Yeah, no, I mean, that's what they... These are the same people. These are the same people who do actually engage routinely in doxing. Andy No, this is precisely what he does. Andy No doesn't even go after like fucking famous people or anything like that. They literally... Andy No goes after random fucking, you know, EMTs and shit like that, calling them Antifa and working alongside right-wing violent right-wing uh paramilitaries to go and like genuinely cause harm to them and threaten them throw back to when libs of tiktok smeared a suicide prevention hotline for lgbtq youth as a grooming organization they deleted it since but here it is what kids were they protecting here exactly exactly these guys are 1000 percent like they're not good the the, the the libs of tiktok is not a good uh institution is not a good organization she is not going to uh, uh the the libs of tiktok woman is not going to lose her job her job is literally this this is her job when you're unmasking an organization you're unmasking who is behind that organization and who is operating that organization it is entirely separate than than being like this emt has a only fans and unloading into the unloading into her and and causing severe harm to her life also another thing you have to remember is like someone doing only fans has absolutely nothing to do with like someone who operates specifically to get uh, queer teachers fired okay the only part of this article that even even linked back to anything remotely related to the person who owns or who runs libs of TikTok was originally just a real estate license hyperlink that they immediately removed. And that in and of itself was not revealing personal fucking information in any meaningful capacity. That is just the, the, the headquarters of a real estate company that the realtor had. And for the record, I have to mention one more time as someone who does uh, deal with on deal with this kind of shit on a regular basis, I think it's completely inappropriate and completely unacceptable to to reveal the addresses of where people live, okay? I, and I, I know that Taylor believes that as well, and I know Taylor knows that as well. So it's completely, completely unacceptable to do that. Which of course, the irony is the right wing does do that, and they're using this as another reason to do that. You, Taylor Lorenz, are the worst people on the internet. All of them combined is Taylor Lorenz. How do I know this? Okay, there's an account on Twitter. It's called Libs of TikTok. 
All libs of TikTok does is it juxtaposes old tweets by liberals on TikTok with their new tweets. So during the Trump era, they'd be like, judges overruling Trump is great. And then two years later, like, judges overruling Biden is terrible. That's all. Wait, what? That's not what libs of TikTok does. Once again, libs of TikTok does not do this. Libs of TikTok 100% will find random queer teachers talking about their experiences. Some of them are cringe as fuck and say cringe shit for sure. And some of them don't. And they're just personally going through their own experiences with like, don't say gay, for example, the bill in Florida and how that is impacting their lives. Libs of TikTok will literally, alongside the Florida Republican Party, will find those people and literally say that they're pedophiles. That's it. And if they don't directly say that they're groomers and pedophiles, they are putting them in a pool of all queer teachers that are all, and, and going along with the idea that all queer teachers are technically grooming uh, children. And also the ultimate goal is to just basically QAnonify the regular Republican party further. The idea that like Libs of TikTok does any good is fucking silly. We've gone from Libs of TikTok is saving children to the kids that are bullied by Libs of TikTok were asking for it. The Libs of TikTok account regularly targeted children. They've gone after numerous kids calling them mentally ill as their followers cheer on for all the bullying, all for the crime of acting like teens on the internet. Internet. This crusade against teachers is a new thing they started doing. Taylor Lorenz literally broke all ethics and interviewed Kellyanne Conway's daughter, and you are concerned about resharing a video put out by kids themselves. If kids don't want it, they can keep themselves off of social media. If you post yourself looking like a freak, then you get what's coming, a lesson learned. And every freak teacher should be fired immediately. Get these pedos and weirdos out of our schools. Of course, all of these people are anonymous on, per uh, in, on purpose. They're anonymous on purpose because they, God forbid, God forbid they get blasted by someone on the internet. You know what I mean? Yeah. If you post cringe, you deserve to get doxxed and bullied on the internet relentlessly. That's how it works especially when you're like a random person and not even someone like myself you know what i mean like i post cringe i get shit on non-stop i fucking I, I get quote unquote canceled that's one thing i'm a fucking public figure you know what i mean i'm not a random teacher in florida a random queer teacher or even like a random teenager you know what i mean it was revealed that something that absolutely was not revealed oh this is what i was talking about Watch. At a recent school board meeting, it was revealed that a Michigan school plays litter box in the bathrooms for students that identify as cats. Unbelievable. The video is some random nutcase right-wing mom who read a story on Facebook and showed up to a school board meeting to yell about it. And then, of course, the account made a point of identifying the fucking school. How are you going to sit here and act like this is just a person who reposts videos from TikTok? The only way you can do that is if you genuinely believe what they're doing is great. And also, since this cancellation of libs of TikTok, oh man... Uh, they're so fucking terrified of what happened to them. They've literally gained more followers since this cancellation happened. They started a sub stack and they're fucking caked up and they went on Tucker Carlson twice now. There's such fucking little cry bullies that turn around and act like Taylor is a cry bully. It's so psychotic, dude. The right wing routinely doxes, harasses, sends death threats to people, okay? But they very successfully have been able to make it seem like it's only the left that does this. This is all it is. Only the left is doing this. And it's not even true. Also, post videos on TikTok, from TikTok, of, of leftists talking about how they wish to indoctrinate your kids in sexual orientation and gender theory, for example. And this account has become popular because it exposes to light people on the left and what they say. So Taylor Lorenz tracked down the person behind the account went and knocked on her door, and then knocked on the door of all of her relatives. Because how dare there be an account that just basically retweets people on the left? That's bullshit. That's bullshit. If there was an account that literally fucking made erroneous claims regularly about random conservative citizens being pedophiles, you would lose your fucking mind. You lose your mind when people fucking film themselves being victim to a hate crime and then post it on Twitter and then the woke mob comes after them. You literally get mad when someone is in the process of being a fucking horrible bully to like a black person and then you turn around and you're like, no, actually, this is just simply posting the footage. Okay, the argument is literally, okay, well, don't be a fucking racist in public like that's you're literally publicly being raised in front of 50 people in a fucking you know coffee shop and then getting upset that you got fucking blasted ass blast on the timeline and as it turns out the person behind the account is an orthodox jewish mother and this makes her very very orthodox jewish mother like what would oh identity politics let's hit him with that too very bad. this is very bad because she's anti-gay you see libs of tiktok according to the Washington Post ran a several thousand word story by the execrable Taylor Lorenz on this. Quote, libs of TikTok gained more prominence throughout the end of the last year, cementing its spot in the right wing media outrage cycle. Its attacks on the LGBTQ plus community also escalated. By January, Rachel's page was leaning hard into groomer discourse, calling for any teacher who comes out as gay to their students to be quote unquote 
fired on the spot. Her I mean, that's true, though. They are doing that. So what? Uh, you can't just, like, read parts of this article and then read it in a snarky tone, and then that's how you fucking defeat uh, everyone in the marketplace of ideas. Like, this is titled, Ben Shapiro wrecks Washington Post cry bully who docks libs of TikTok. And so far, if we are to go back, it's two minutes and 30 seconds. So far, all he's done is fucking and, and screech about Taylor Lorenz, lie about Taylor Lorenz's uh, occupation and what she does, lie about what libs of TikTok does, and greatly make it seem like they're just a random fucking Twitter account account and not like playing a role in how policies are getting passed in the state legislature in Florida. It's so insane that this is not owning. This is not ownership in the marketplace of ideas in any way. The irony, of course, is that that person that lives a TikTok woman literally took a photo of Taylor outside of her door and then publicly posted it, which is unironically way more doxing your, yourself than anything else. Like there is no better way to dox yourself than like literally post right outside of your fucking doorstep. That is significantly more information information that she revealed about herself than whatever Taylor Lorenz did. I think he doesn't know what is doxing. No, I, I, I think he does. I think he's just being disingenuous. Sorry, this is absurd. So you're now tracking down and attempting to uncover the identity of people who are just tweeting stuff on the internet that you don't like. This is your, th this is your job. Okay, so basically the media are now the intimidation thug wing of the Democratic Party. Say something that, you, that, that they don't like. And they will come after you. They will try to destroy your business. They'll try to destroy your life. Here's the thing. It ain't going to work. It ain't going to work because Democrats are going to lose. They're going to lose badly in 2022. And people like Taylor Lorenz are going to be laughed off the stage of American politics as well they should be. And when you mention Taylor Lorenz, she's going to say, oh, I'm so sad. People are being mean to me. Yeah, you know why they're mean to you? Because people are just doing to you what you have done to others. Hey, you are the worst person on the internet. You're a ben, there are literally Nazis on the internet, brother. Like, ones that would kill you, too, even though they find you to be, like, a, at least an ally to a certain degree, regardless of being Jewish. How are you going to sit here and be like, Taylor Lorenz is the worst person on the internet? Like, that's so fucking stupid, dude. So how about this? Stop being the worst person on the internet, and maybe people will be less critical of you. But again, if the Democrats' playbook here is we are going to embrace all sorts of crazy radical policy and our only tactic to prevent the backlash is to deploy Taylor Lorenz to uncover the identity of libs of TikTok. Good luck with that. All you're underscoring is the fact that you're completely out of touch with the American public. All you're underscoring is that the means that you deem necessary. Like everything Ben Shapiro is, is erroneously claiming about Taylor Lorenz could actually apply to him perfectly. That's why this conversation is also really stupid. Like, Ben, you are one of the worst people on the internet, straight up. You actually are one of the worst people on the internet. You try to subtly red pill, you try to red pill people, destroy them, the marketplace of ideas, like all this shit, right? Defend the Republican party who is hor that is horrifying. It's, it's pure projection when you turn around and you're like, Taylor Lorenz, the reason why people hate you and want to fucking murder you is because you're a bad person it's like there's no justification for what taylor is going through okay but unfortunately it is just how it works every journalist everyone in politics knows especially if you're uh, on the left or center left or or just not outwardly a right-wing person you know you're just gonna get fucking blasted straight up no matter what i've been in this for 10 years doxing regular process death threats regular process harassment in person regular part of the business i talked about this yesterday part of the reason why i want to leave the Young Turks is because after the 9-11 comments, they were fucking sending death threats to people that were my co-workers that had nothing to do with anything, you know? So this idea that the right doesn't do this as a part of its modus operandi is so fucking stupid. They do it all the time. They do it nonstop. It's a normal part of my fucking life and my daily existence, which is why I also find it really funny whenever people are like, you're a grifter. You're a leftist grifter, okay? Uh, okay, yeah, that's why. Because I, I love death threats, dude. It's my favorite thing for the past 10 fucking years. And as someone who went through like the Gamergate era politics when I was on the other side, when I was still a leftist, okay, let me tell you, it's coming back in a big way. As I've said, it's back. Gamergate politics is back in a big fucking way, in a major way. Every single realtor at the company she worked for is tied to that address. It's a public facing work address for a business that's open to the public. You continue to claim she lived at her employer's address and offer no proof. This is a lie, but they know that to prove it, I'd have to publish a document showing the actual home address. Taylor Lorenz linked to a document in her story that included the private home address. The address was shared with an LLC, but it was a commercial residential mix. They just keep saying that like Taylor actually posted her home address on the article. School teacher. Recently, we started wearing pronoun pins and the kids get to pick a new pronoun pin every day. We have some that pick like she, her every single day and we have some that change it up. So I'm a non-binary preschool teacher and my kids know I'm non-binary. 
Um, they know I'm not a girl or a boy. I use they, them pronouns in the classroom. We work on it. Not all the kids get it. That's okay. And I go by Mix Gray in the classroom, not Miss or Mr. Man, y'all thought me uh, teaching the children about me being Polly was crazy. But not only that, but they also know that I'm gender fluid. I'm going to give you my explanation about what it means to be transgender as well. So when babies are born, the doctor looks at them and they make a guess about whether the baby is a boy or a girl. Kids as young as three and four are actually aware of their gender identity, even if they don't have the language for it. To say that pre-K through third grade are not ready for such topics is actually internalized homophobia and transphobia. <laughs> so those How does a kid in third grade know that they're straight? And when a fucking parent says like, oh, are you dating? Do you have a crush on any girls to a third grader? Is that immediately and automatically about sex? Like you're talking about fucking? Because that's real fucking strange. And Republicans do that shit all the time. As a matter of fact, it's not even just that. Republicans do way worse shit. They actually put them in fucking goddamn child beauty pageants and shit, okay? You have to understand something here. Mentioning what your what your life is like or or stopping people from being able to do that because they're gay or because they're trans is fucking insane. I mean, it's just another way to try to push gay people out of the, the forefront of society, force them back into fucking dark corners where they have to hide who they are. That is the goal. And they're trying to do that by associating them with grooming, okay? If you're gay or if you're trans, you're grooming children. That's what they're saying. You're a predator. You're grooming children. It's not even a new idea. I've shown you the 1950s uh, homophobic ad. This is completely, completely unacceptable and ultimately you have to understand you can't turn someone gay that's not how this exists these teachers are not like turning their fucking students gay or trans remember how we focused on all of the other aspects of this conversation that like now all of a sudden we have completely latched on to the presupposition that like you can be turned into a homosexual person or you can be turned into a trans person all of a sudden. That's not even a real thing. But now we're not even talking about that. We've already taken that as fact when it's not true. The only thing you can do by pushing gay people and trans people behind closed doors is make it harder for gay and trans teenagers to be able to come out and live comfortably with themselves greatly increasing their suicide risk. That's it. That's literally it. You are systemically bullying gay children. You're systemically bullying trans children. That's it. That's all this is. It's cruel as fuck. It's bullshit. And you can say that the teachers are groomers or whatever the fuck you want, but it's idiotic and completely psychotic. And the main purpose is to hide the existence of gay and trans people with the hopes that you could just like lie to your children if only I had a teacher like them i would have realized it was trans much sooner save my life 20 years of confusion and suffering yeah but a lot of these people don't fucking see that like they don't see it as that or rather they don't care and if it was a choice if being straight or gay was a choice then literally how could you ever be gay like every facet of society historically uh, or at least in contemporary western society has told you that being straight is right it's the correct thing as a matter of fact like being gay is wrong and immoral so how the fuck are there even any gay people you know what i mean how if it's a choice how the fuck are there any gay people and not only that but even if it is a choice, which it's not, but even if it was a choice, why is that bad? Explain to me why you think it's bad to be trans or to be gay, if it's even a choice. The only reason if you were to say, oh, well, being trans is a choice and it's actually bad, blah, blah, blah. The only reason why it's bad is because of the high suicide rate, right? Why is there a high suicide rate, motherfucker? It's because of you, because you say it's a choice and that people shouldn't do it. It's so fucking insane. It's unnatural, brother. So are skyscrapers, motherfucker. So is AC. Shut the fuck up. So are cars. So is the internet. Yeah, so is medical surgery. And of course, the irony is that like, if you look to nature, oh my God, nature is gay as fuck. Nature is trans as fuck. Like, what do you mean? So it's literally more natural to be gay or trans. What the fuck are you talking about? So like, it's so fucking idiotic to be like, is it nature is not natural. Okay, dude, you don't know anything about nature, I guess. Say that pre-K through third grade are not ready for such topics is actually internalized homophobia and transphobia. <laughs> so those are the people in charge of tending <laughs> to your small children's minds while you're at work. Yeah, they're literally yeah. like, why do you think they're showing this person? They're showing this person to be like, this is a freak. This is a bad person. This is a person with blue hair and they're teaching your children and you should be scared. They don't look clean cut in the way that you would want them to be. That's it. That's straight up the reason. It is psychopathic. It's fucking disgusting. It is a way to be as cruel as possible to uh, queer people. That's it. Now, maybe you agree with the views you just heard. Maybe you think that doctors just guess at the sex of newborns. Maybe you don't agree. It almost doesn't matter. 
Either way, you have a right as a parent to know what these people are teaching to your children. And yet before libs of TikTok, there was not an easy way to find out what they were teaching and take the <laughs> teacher's word for it. Well, it turns out there are an awful lot of videos like this out there. Libs of TikTok found a lot of them. Here, for example, is the scene at one private school in Washington, D.C. Wow, that's a jailable offense. How horrifying. I'm so angry at those kids protesting and saying Black Lives Matter. Bro, if you literally get mad at that, you are a sick freak, okay? Oh my God. All around the country, children are protesting Black Lives Matter and not a single school police officer, liaison officer, is tasing them. What's going on? These kids need to know there is a cost to the protesting, especially if they're protesting against white supremacy. And that cost is getting beat to a bloody pulp. You can't say Black Black Lives Matter without getting your shit pushed in. You're not preparing your children for the real future. <laughs> okay, so let's say you're paying $45,000 a year to send your kids to some... By the way, private school is like a really interesting fucking take here because like if we're going to talk about private school, I mean, if we're going to talk about private school and grooming. Oh my God, dude. I mean, the Republican Party is literally pro-private school so they can quite literally groom. Like, and by groom, I mean fuck children grooming. Okay, not like, oh, gay people exist. Like, I'm talking straight up, they want to fuck children and they want to groom those children in Catholic schools. They want to groom those children in like God knows what kind of fucking religious indoctrination. So it's wild, absolutely wild that he's talking about private schools grooming kids to do what? BLM protests? Oh my God. Tucker Carlson also famously defended Warren Jeffs, a white supremacist pedophile cult leader. Just, I want to remember that. I want everyone to remember that. Tucker Carlson literally has defended a white supremacist cult leader who arranged child marriages. He has defended Warren Jeffs. So you know this motherfucker doesn't care when his side is doing the actual grooming, not the fake grooming, which is telling children the, the existence of gay people and trans people. But it's fucking wild that this dickhead can get away with saying that and then turning around and be like, it's grooming when your teacher has blue hair. What's going on? Overrated, mediocre private school in the District of Columbia. You think everything's fine, you pull up libs of TikTok and you find out what's actually happening in your kid's classroom. What's wrong with that? This is journalism. No news organization in America has done more to reveal the reality within American schools than libs of TikTok. We aired a number of their videos on the show and we are grateful for their reporting. It was far more straightforward than anything you're gonna find in the New York Times or the Washington Post because it wasn't accompanied by a lot of bloviating that just showed you the tape and you could decide. That's journalism. That's awesome. Is journalism to just like blast random fucking queer teachers that uh, whose TikToks you find on the timeline and then call them pedophiles. That's journalism. Fuck yeah, dude. That's awesome. I mean, that's sick. That's great. I don't know what else to say about that other than uh, good job, Tucker Carlson. Anyway, anybody who fucking here, the, the, the serves at a good thread on this. Since there seems to be a lot of confusion about the libs of TikTok saga, including for people on the left who are buying into a lie that is just a site that posts videos on LGBTQ+, that makes it look bad. Here's a thread with all the receipts. The account would frequently take videos Videos of teachers either discussing how they're trans or gay, explaining why they're scared of anti-LGBTQ laws and how it affects their class environment. The lives of TikTok would state they're pedophiles or grooming children. Teacher brags about grooming kids. Minnesota preschool teacher admits to grooming kids. Teacher at Pike Schools, adding the school by the way, doesn't want a parent to find this TikTok. She leads a GSA, Gay Straight Alliance Club, unless the students tell their parents as a study group. We have seen multiple examples already of teachers grooming kids in GSA club behind parents' back. Hi, M. Hand S. Johnson, why are you grooming kids? Like literally fucking saying people are just grooming kids. The libs of TikTok directly called for teachers to be fired. They also spread a false conspiracy theory about litter boxes for students who identify as cats being placed in Michigan schools and then implicated a specific district. Any teacher who others the word I came out to my students should be fired on the spot. At a recent school board meeting, it was revealed that a Michigan school placed the litter boxes in the bathroom for students that identify as cats. Unbelievable. Turns out it was not that at all. Turns out it was some fucking right wing psycho who actually saw this uh, on a Facebook article and was just repeating it at the fucking parent teachers association association meeting, as is the case with many of these psychopathic fucking right-wing reactionary Karen brigades. Stop sending your kids to government-run indoctrination camps. 
telling them to no longer go to school. My wife put together a preschool pride parade for her class. Numerous teachers have been reported on the severe harassment they received. The Libs of TikTok founder has boasted that several teachers have been fired as a result of their uh, them being featured on their account. Tyler Wren, a former English teacher in Oklahoma, posted a video telling LGBTQ kids shunned by the parents that Wren was proud of them and loved them. It was featured on Libs of TikTok last week. Since being featured on the page, Wren has been barraged with harassment and death threats, adding the superintendent. Norton is talking about who showed up in his email inbox Monday. I'm going to kill you and shoot up your next school board meeting for promoting the horrific radical transgender agenda. It's now time to declare war on you pedos. I am going to kill you and your entire family. In response to the death threat, the ECASD superintendent Mike Johnson released a statement on Wednesday. The safety and security of our students, families, and staff, community members is of utmost importance. That's the person that libs of TikTok was blasting, Michael Johnson. And they know this. Republicans know that this is how it works. They know that if you do this, people will get mad and people will actually fucking react this way. They do it for that reason. They want you to not defend LGBT rights. I'm straight. I'm a cishet guy, okay? I'm a disgusting breeder. Okay? I'm a dirty little breeder. And even I get relentless amounts of fucking hatred or simply the crime of defending trans people, okay? Just the crime of defending trans people alone is enough for motherfuckers to be like, you know, you deserve to die. You deserve to die a horrible fucking death. So that's what I always use when I'm talking about how much worse it is if you're just trans or gay or marginalized in some capacity. If I'm getting this level of shit for just defending marginalized people, then holy fuck, having their existence be debated every day is 1 million percent more difficult than that. And for those who are asking like oh what changed your mind about trans people what changed your mind uh because you said you were transphobic uh, originally you had transphobic tendencies transphobic jokes that you made this part of this part of my understanding of like trans existence uh, being uh consistently under threat was this even having like uh you know even even defending trans people a little bit on the internet draws ire so then add to that uh, your very existence being deliberated on as though it's a matter of debate like whether you're faking it or not whether you're a fucking groomer or not like that's crazy man that's so so unacceptable. Libs of TikTok communicates openly with Ron DeSantis' press secretary, Christina Pushaw. You guys know this already. They've collaborated on directly targeting LGBTQ, LGBTQ teachers and publicly identifying them. I just wanted all my followers to stay tuned on Libs of TikTok for a big announcement in the near future. If you don't follow the account, you definitely should. Seconded, one of the best accounts out there. My God, this groomer is proxy for gay shit. That's the stop. First of all, heterosexuals groom people too. And second, by and large, the pub ed teaching population is mostly women and they're the ones driving gender ideology everywhere. Exactly. Libs of TikTok have plenty of evidence teachers are desperate to talk to little kids about sex as a disorder if you want to stop me you're gonna to have to fucking kill me i will say gay and i will protect trans kids she seems very emotionally stable desantis should use this in a campaign ad she's a fourth grade teacher by the way where does she teach? Narcissistic Florida first grader teacher has a breakdown over the thought of not being able to talk about her marriage. District? And then she like posts the fucking district. By March, Libs of TikTok was directly impacting legislation. DeSantis' press secretary, Christina Pushaw, credited the account with opening her eyes and informing her views on the state's restrictive legislation that bans discussion of sexuality or gender identity in kindergarten through third grade, referred to by critics as the don't say gay bill. She and Libs of TikTok have interacted with each other at least 138 times publicly, according to a report by Media Matters. When asked by the Post, about her relationship with the account. Pushaw wrote, I follow, like, and retweet Libs of TikTok. My interactions with that account are public and added that she's a strong supporter of its mission. These stories are all then amplified by Joe Rogan, Glenn Greenwald, and Tucker Carlson, who helped the account reach millions of new people, again, spreading false claims and conspiracy theories. The Washington Post article also, as we mentioned time and time again, did not actually publish the founder of Libs of TikTok's personal address, family address, or home, or phone number. Okay, that was a lie that the Republicans are telling again. And Christina Pushaw admits it. It's mission. Its mission is not journalism. They're, they're trying to use that as a defense now, but it's not. It's never been that. Journalism is not about calling random fucking queer teachers uh, the pedophiles and then trying to get them uh, to be fired. That's Project Veritas shit. But they consider that to be journalism as well. Journalism is when we fucking, uh, you know, destroy our enemies. Journalism is when we lie and spread rumors. Journalism is when we fabricate outrage against uh, uh, queer teachers uh, with the express purpose of having them be harmed. Journalism is when you fucking say the Trevor Project, a organization that I've raised money for before, okay, a very good organization for the record, helps uh, queer kids not fucking kill themselves, okay, helps uh, homeless queer children, helps queer kids uh, with, uh, you know, with services, a great organization. That organization is actually grooming. That's the, the, the their grooming organization. Is this a psyop? What the fuck is this shit? No, this is just regular. This is how brutal and awful Republicans are. That's it. That That's how they operate. That's how fucking awful they are. You're seeing it. Like you're seeing it manifest in front of your fucking eyes. And you are able to, unlike in the past, 
see exactly how they operate because a lot of us on the leftist side are, uh, are, are not giving up on this shit and at least have some level of capability and some level of reach to be able to push back against this kind of uh, ridiculous bullshit that Republicans are pumping out on a daily basis. They have a much larger audience. They have a much broader appeal. And they also rely on the homophobia and transphobia that people start off with. That's the main difference. If you didn't have resources like myself, like the serfs, like all these other fucking outlets, you 100% would probably look at what the fucking Republicans are doing who uh, have a very good way of crafting a narrative to make it seem like what they're doing is not brutal and horrific and maybe even agree with it. Millions of parents are grateful for that. So is Christina Pushaw, who's the press secretary for the governor of Florida, Ron DeSantis. It was partly in response to videos that she saw on libs of TikTok that Florida ultimately banned public school teachers from lecturing kindergartners about sex. That's no law. It's one of the most popular laws in the state. The majority of Democrats support it. So libs of TikTok was getting results as good journalism does. Not bad for a Twitter feed. I love that, dude. Yeah, don't need, don't, you don't need context. You don't need context. Of course you don't. The context is already provided to you with like the homophobia and, and the, the heteronormative position that you're born into. In a heteronormative society, of course, you don't need any additional context to think that like a, a gay person is just a fucking freak, right? That's, that's just what he's saying. Yeah, trans people are fucking bad and morally degenerate because we live in a heteronormative society and they deviate from the norm. That's Tucker Carlson's entire argument. It's perfect. He's like, you don't need any context to call these people fucking groomers. So of course that Twitter feed had to be shut down. The Biden administration and its many servants in the news media set to work. The neoliberal slander machine Media Matters published four separate hit pieces on libs of TikTok in just the past three weeks. It was trafficking hate for allowing liberals to talk about themselves. It was anti-gay. <laughs> As if the site was attacking anyone. Certainly it was not attacking gays. It was just playing tape of people talking about themselves in their own. Dude, there is a difference between just posting fucking people's TikToks or reposting people's TikToks and saying, this person is a fucking pedophile. Also, the irony here is that none of those teachers, not a single one of those teachers have defended, to my knowledge at the very least, fucking children. Whereas Tucker Carlson has. Tucker Carlson has defended fucking children. Okay, I didn't need to mention this again. Tucker Carlson has defended fucking children. That's Tucker's own world words, by the way, like straight up. Why the fuck? No one is forcing you to defend child brides and, and child rape. Okay, no one is defend. No one's forcing you. Yet you still did. Yet you still fucking did. So why are you doing that? Unless they shut down the account entirely twice. They suspended it. One of those suspensions came after a complaint from a Harvard law instructor called Alejandra Caraballo. Quote, my report on libs of TikTok violating Twitter rules got them suspended, he bragged. Yet the woman who keeps, who runs libs of TikTok kept going. So ultimately, Jeff Bezos weighed in. Bezos's personal newspaper, the Washington Post, decided to harass the family of the woman who operates libs of TikTok. They couldn't find her, so they went after her family. The Harass. Harassing a family is when you try to fucking confirm someone's identity. That's that's harassing. Harassment of a family member. Asking them if they want a fucking quote, if they want to give a quote, is, is harassment. Post sent what it calls its tech columnist, Taylor. Dude, this is literally doxing the person, dude. You are straight up doing a way bigger disservice and unironically doxing the person by showing this. This footage is literally the, the fucking front yard. What the fuck? What are you doing? No, the lot lady is a journalist. No, this person is Taylor Lorenz. She is my friend. I know her very well. The person who took the photo of Taylor is either the family member of the Libs of TikTok account or the Libs of TikTok account itself. But the Libs of TikTok account published it published this photo unironically actually doxing themselves which is crazy why wouldn't you just call them why go to their house law she was trying to confirm the identity and then they didn't pick up the phone calls on purpose so she was trying to confirm the identity of the person so that she wasn't revealing like false information following a fucking lead is literally what you do she is in that situation following a fucking lead so we've already established that this is a worthwhile public figure that has a lot of uh, you know 
that is in the public interest to figure out who's behind this account because it is a worthwhile public figure that is working with political operatives. Political operatives are personally fucking admitting that they're relying on libs of TikTok. This is a uh, GOP operative functionally that is also using their platform to dox or harass people who are posting videos on TikTok to put their lives in fucking, you know, jeopardy. So covering this as a newsworthy article is completely understandable. How can someone dox themselves with this photo? Dumb question, maybe? What do you mean? She just, she literally posted like identifiable landmarks of her out, outside of her house. Normies don't understand how little information online weirdos need to find you. Yeah, literally. I don't think you guys get it, which is cool. Like, I'm glad that you guys don't know how fucked up that is, but... Chatters don't get it. Taylor taught, thought someone related to lives of TikTok lived at this place. She never confirmed it. They didn't pick up. They didn't pick up the phone, and they didn't actually fucking open the door to talk to them. Then Glenn Greenwald confirmed it by uh, admitting that like Taylor had come to the lives of TikTok house because lives of TikTok had a conversation with Glenn Greenwald. Okay, but because she did that, we know what Taylor Lorenz was saying. Here's what she said: "Quote, you're being implicated." in starting a hate campaign against LGBTQ people. Right, a hate campaign. So here you have Taylor Lorenz, who's effectively acting as the stock. But she's right. It is a hate campaign. Libs of TikTok does do hate campaigns, and so does Tucker Carlson. And that's why Tucker Carlson is doing everything he can to defend Libs of TikTok. That's what it is. What is it supposed to be? It's literally trying to drive pogroms against fucking gay people and, and queer people in general. And it's also giving them the, an out here. If you're unaffiliated with the account, I want to be sure to set the record straight. If it's your account, I would love to speak to you about it. So what the fuck? I see for the deep state trying to intimidate a private citizen into silence. Yeah, the deep state, dude. Yeah, the deep state. Literally fucking deep state. He is just straight up doing QAnon shit, dude. Taylor Lorenz is a part of the fucking deep state. And they're, and the deep state is just anti-pedophilia. That's, or I mean, sorry, uh, a pro-pedophilia. That's what's going on, right? And this morning, she gave it her best shot. The Washington Post published a piece by Lorenz linking to the name, the physical address, and the real estate licensing information of the woman who runs Libs of TikTok. After the Post published the article, the woman behind the libs of TikTok went into hiding. That was, of course, the whole point of the exercise. People know where she lives because the Washington Post linked to it, so she had to leave. Wrong. That's not real either. That's fucking bullshit. The article originally had a hyperlink to the woman's, like, real estate uh, license, okay? She's a realtor. Through that hyperlink, you could find what, the, what the, the, the headquarters of that real estate, commercial real estate, commercial property was. But that's not where she lives. There's no evidence that that's where she lives. And they also took down the hyperlink immediately. That's wrong. It's bullshit, but it's not going to stop Tucker Carlson from lying. Now, Taylor Lorenz, of all people, knew this would happen. She knew what she was doing when she wrote the story. She was trying to shut this woman up. It was just a couple of months ago, you might remember, that Lorenz herself complained on television that she was being harassed and that no one under any circumstances would be allowed to show up at her home. Here she is. Trolls live everywhere. Can, can you just explain what it's like? Can you draw a picture of what it is like when a surge of harassment hits? It's horrifying. And it's not just me either. You know, they immediately dox you and go after your family members. They try and look up everyone who's ever, you know, been associated with you. Um, and it's just completely overwhelming and terrifying. Oh, they go after you. It's like saying you're doxing the president when you fucking say 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. You know what I mean? Taylor Lorenz was doxing the United States of America's very own president. What's going on? In the interest of maintaining journalistic integrity, we had to also engage in the same doxing of the United States president by saying 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Lives with TikTok and now just tag a teacher's school and wink, not even give a specific direction, but their followers know what to do. They know, already know what the deal is. Yep. 